um, and welcome to New Mexico Main Street's second webinar of the series uh, this fall, Mastering the Main Street ACD Performance Review. I'm Eduardo Martinez and I'm here with Ana Blythe and Danielle Gutierrez from New Mexico Main Street. Would you like to say hello? Good afternoon. Welcome to our webinar series. This is Ana. Good afternoon. Welcome. Uh, hope this helps with the upcoming assessment. Welcome everybody. Um, I do have only about 20 slides here. I, I am going to jump part through the part of the presentation over to a web interface. This with this one might get us a little bit beyond. I'm trying to stick to 20 minutes, but might get us a little bit beyond uh, the 20 minute time frame. And then we will stay as long as we need um, after the presentation to do uh, to do a Q and A piece. So um, I'm just going to go ahead and get started. A uh, little bit of what we're going to talk about today, um, an overview of the process and some of the timelines, a just a little bit of information about the certification and accreditation. Uh, I'll discuss some of the compliance issues and the compliance New Mexico Main Street needs. Um, and then I'll, I'll look at the surveys and the dashboard. When we get to the discussion, I will switch over to the web interface and show you what that looks like. I'll spend a little bit of time talking about the work plans, about when and where all of you should participate in the assessment process. So a minute or two on the four-point refresh and how that affects our assessment this year. I'll close up with some discussion about the board engagement in the assessment process. And then the last couple of slides really focus on here's some things that we learned in the field from the last couple of years of assessments. I think, I think there's some good opportunities really glean some good information from what we've seen and heard uh, during the assessment. And I'll close out with the follow-up pieces to the assessment. Uh, many of you will see some information that you're already aware of or have heard before. Um, and so just please, please bear with us as we get through that content for those participants who have not been part of the assessment process before. So a little bit about the presentation. Right now, all of you are listening in in audio-only mode. Um, and so uh, that means that you cannot speak, uh, but you, uh, you can listen to us either through your uh, computer interface or over the telephone. If there, there's a control panel to the right of your screen, and if it's getting in the way of the presentation, you can just hit that little orange button, and it will, it will minimize the control panel. I will say that there are there's a section in that control panel that is titled handouts. There are four handouts in this section. One is the uh, the actual presentation that I'm show, showing you right now in in notes format. Um, I also have uploaded two PDF files of the board and staff surveys that we use in the assessment and the partner surveys. And this is helpful for you to to um, this is helpful for you to move. Uh, to download and use in your preparation piece. And then I also have a, I also have a uh, 10 standards checklist as well that I sent out to the list over a couple of weeks ago. Right? Uh, if, you are di if you're having problems with the audio cutting out of the system, you might want to dial in to the phone number. We're using the conference line to reach you right now. And usually if the audio is cutting out, it's, it's a bandwidth problem with your internet connection. So I would I would say feel free to just dial in. Um, after, the, after the presentation is done, there are two ways that we'll take questions. You can type a question in the question box at the bottom, and then we'll go through those. Or you can click on the raise hand button in that control panel, and that alerts us and allows us to unmute your, your audio, and you can ask, uh, speak to everybody over the phone, and, and we can take questions that way. Uh, so a little bit about the over the assessment itself. Uh, first, let me start out. Why why are we doing the annual performance reviews? Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions about this that we're really looking for an opportunity to just uh, police police your programs and look at where that's working. And I don't think we have fully conveyed um, what we use the information for and how we use it. So for starters, we're trying to develop an understanding of your poor performance as an organization. Remember that all the Main Street and Arts and Cultural District programs 
is your uh, your part of the program through an application process, and it is it is funded by the state legislature through New Mexico Main Street, not directly your programs, but the the Main Street program in general. So part of uh, it, part of the work is to this is an evaluation process as well. So we're trying to understand where you are and where you're headed next. Part of the assessment really generates information that needs to be reported both to the legislature and the National Main Street Center regarding our, our compliance. And then it also helps us with, and, and you together with performance management. How, what education, training, assistance, technical assistance on your the need to really uh, meet the specifications of your, of your Main Street program. What information is needed in the uh, assessment? Well, first of all, we collect uh, information about your compliance with state and federal regulations, and, and you'll see a little bit more of that in the dashboard and in later slides, right? So your uh, these are all items that the state needs to verify in order to, to, to be able to provide you services. We're also looking for your adherence to the National Main Street Standards, and, and, and I'll talk a little bit about those later in the presentation. We want to look at your projects and your performance and your achievement, and then, and then help you uh, help you figure out what are the trouble spots that you need to get over uh, or need assistance with, and particularly your capital outlay projects. And then we we do want to get a sense of your stakeholder participation. Keep in mind that. Main Street Arts and Cultural District is a community-based, community-driven economic development initiative, so we do want to get an understanding of, of, of that piece. Um, we collect the data using information from program associate service reports, so anytime they're in, their, in your community providing technical assistance, they have to submit a follow-up report, an after-action report to the state. Uh, information for the dashboards, we're asking for project summaries this year, and I'll talk a little bit about that here shortly. There's a number of surveys, and then our site visit, and any other communication that we have with you is, is what we collect. Again, the overall goal is planning and coordination, uh, resource allocations, trainings, project coordination, et cetera. Right? So uh, that's the quick overview. I'll start out by just a, a, a very basic discussion of what your role is and as, as a Main Street or Arts and Cultural Dis affiliate. Uh, first of all, you're, you really serve as a centralized infrastructure to lead the downtown revitalization process, right? And that means you are creating processes that lead to common economic development goals for the district and support the economic revitalization. You assume responsibility for shared performance on those economic development projects via the four points approach. And, and I do want to emphasize the shared performance because in order for your revitalization to work well, there are a number of partners that really come into play to help you move that work forward. Part of your work is to maintain continuous com communication with the stakeholders, whether that's your local government partners, your EDCs, your chambers, your downtown businesses, your property owners, et cetera. So we do want to get a sense of that as well. Constantly support the participants and the activities to build incremental successes. I, most of you have downtown master plans, comp plans, economic development plans that really have a long-term vision, but things aren't going to change overnight. We really look towards how are you moving projects in, incre in an incremental manner to, to achieve that vision. And then finally, uh, that you implement the economic development goals and strategies and, and monitor the, the progress towards the outcomes. And I think you've heard that in our last couple of presentations at the quarterly meetings as well as in the, in the previous webinar uh, last month. A little bit about the review process. I already talked about we collect information from service reports. Uh, we compile the data from the quarterly reports that you send to Keith. Uh, if you're a Main Street program, I'll talk a little bit about the difference between, with the ACD. That's an annual survey that may be going to a semi-annual semi data reporting piece, right? We look at your uh, compliance documents and make sure that those are current and up-to-date. We do need the work plans for, uh, for your organization uh, under the fiscal year that you're operating under. 
we are asking this year, a week before we show up on site, for you to submit uh, project summaries of your four-point activities. This should not be anything extensive. Probably two pages would be would be adequate. But if you are seeking national accreditation, uh, a national accreditation review, those summaries should speak to the checklist that, that you find in the, in the handout as well. Right? Um, before the events, you have a couple of surveys, online surveys. That there is the um, salary survey, the board and staff survey, and the partner survey. And so the, the budget and salary survey is usually the executive director that, that fills that out. The board and staff survey is your executive director and your board members. And the partner survey is usually your local government partners and any other key partners in your downtown revitalization process. Um, and then we have the site visits, right? And I'll show the schedule here shortly. We meet with, with your organization's directors, with your partners, and with your boards in that order. The review process culminates with a set of recommendations, and there are some changes in how we're approaching the recommendations this year, and I'll, I'll touch on that one shortly as well. So I, I've distributed the information here on the, um, the site visit schedule. We start in a couple of weeks in, in southwestern New Mexico, so uh, welcome aboard Las Cruces Deming in Silver City, and thank you for, for taking the lead. Uh, on us quickly. We do have four communities that were emerging communities that are, have now are moving to startup phase. And so South Valley does not have an assessment per se, the Historic Bridge Main Street, but actually a resource team, a two-day resource team. And then Harding County and um, Zuni Pueblo will have their resource teams in the spring, uh, probably mid to late February and into, into mid-March as well. Um, if you have an arts and cultural district in your community, we do the assessment on the same day or the meeting with that, that coordinating council on the same day that we're in your community for the Main Street assessment. Little thing, a couple of things about the state certification piece. Part of the assessment is to really recertify you as a state certified program if you are already certified. Um, which means we're looking at that you're meeting the minimum participation requirements by way of staffing and funding and budgets. Uh, all your compliance documents are current, and then that we have good good idea of the projects and the pro progress that you're working on. The four points, which is why we're looking for evidence of that work. For nationally accredited programs, uh, that is national accreditation is still in place for the next couple of years, at least till 2017 based on the information that we got from Kathy after the, uh, the quarterly in Artesia. Uh, the difference between state certification and national accreditation is that we are looking for those, uh, that evidence of high performance under the National Main Street Center's 10 standards. If you're an emerging community, your site visit is, a, is really about your graduation to startup, so you have a few different benchmarks there. If you're a startup community, you're really operating under the same performance benchmarks as a state certified program. Uh, we do not have any uh, partner affiliates at this time, but for those communities who are having challenges, uh, getting the, the minimum support from their city partners, meeting their minimum funding requirements or their staffing requirements, that is an option. And, and uh, partner status basically has limited resources available to you uh, as a result of that. A little bit about the compliance pieces that, that we're asking for. Uh, there's a one-time compliance piece where you need to upload and keep copies of your Form 1023, your bylaws, and any amendments to the bylaws, conflict of interest policy, records retention destruction policy, whistleblower protections policy, and then fiscal controls policy. All of these, with the exception of the fiscal controls, are required by law, by the federal law, the Internal Revenue Service, the fiscal controls is, is sort of an internal, both the state and New Mexico Main Street requirement for you to contribute. So once we have those in place, and unless those policies change, you don't have to submit those anymore. Each year we do ask for an annual work plan, your operating budget, your updated board rosters, conflict of interest disclosures from, that, from those board members. You must upload your most recent 990 uh, form that is also required by law. 
you need to have your Secretary of State and Attorney General registration documents also set up. Every two years when there is an uh, MOU executed with the organization, then we usually upload that to the, to the dashboard from our end. Once it gets executed, all the signatures are signed, we convert that to a PDF file and we'll upload, upload that to your dashboard. If your community does not have a signed MOU with your local government partner, you effectively cannot meet the requirements of being a state certified program. New this year, we're asking for the annual summary of your activities and we want you to prepare a two-pager. Go back to the previous 12 months uh, in advance of our site visit. So if your visit's in October, your summary should go to October, all the way back to October 2014. If your site visit is in February, you should prepare a summary that starts February 2015 to February 2016. Um, we, a little bit about the surveys themselves. I, I already talked about there were four key surveys, the salary and budget survey. Lonnie Lott will be producing that and you will be uh, hearing from her in the next couple of weeks, September, and no later than the beginning of October. So you'll get an email from her about that one. That's usually the executive directors that fill that one out. There is a board and staff survey. Uh, we, are, we are requiring that, I'm sorry, that says 30 days prior to the visit. We are requiring that seven days prior to the to the visit, and the same with the partner survey. All right. We are asking that you uh, submit your summary of activities over the last 12 months seven days prior as well. Your quarterly investment reports are also used, and we actually prepare a a 10 year uh, summary for you and present that both to your local government partner and to your board when we're on site. So. In the lower right, you'll see the uh, graphic of the um, some of the information from from the the budget and salary survey. One of the things I just wanted to say: the pay close attention to the information you put in here. Make sure it's correct because what we're seeing is that when we add these up from the budget and salary surveys, and then we look at the operating budget that you give us over the same time frame, the numbers don't don't match up as well, right? This example, when you have a community that is their, their funding sources are only the city and the county government, probably will get a, a recommendation that there's a need to, to take on some additional fundraising for your operations as well. The uh, uh, budget, the uh, board and staff survey and partner surveys, most of you have seen these already and you can download the templates from the handout site so that you have a chance to look at them before you sign on to the Survey Monkey and fill those out. If you're an arts and cultural district, there will be a separate salary, uh, there will be the salary and budget survey as well, plus a separate e creative economy survey. And this is a pretty extensive survey. Uh, it should be filled out by the executive director in, and, and ideally in a, in a group session with the board members so that everybody has a chance to contribute to that one. And then there, we may be moving to a semi-annual reinvestment data collection reporting piece uh, in the coming year. And those are those are suggestions that came out from the semi-annual ACD meeting in Ronton a few months ago. Um, so if you're an ACD, we'll provide more information on that one coming down the line. A little bit about the dashboard. And so the dashboard was created as a space for us to really track where you are with the information that the state needed and what we knew, right? And, and I think historically most of this was sent in on paper and, and not all the files made it through the office. So we created a space to really facilitate what this looked like. As you upload documents, the colors in each section change from red to yellow to green and, and then uh, I'll fill you in on what that looks like. There, there's a section on information. There's a section on tracking the training requirements for your executive directors, and then one on uh, national accreditation. There are elements of, of that first one and that last one that don't get filled out until after your site visit. We also have a document repository uh, that's a holding space for a number of your documents. So I'm going to jump back out to the um, web here real quick just to show you. At the bottom of the Main Street homepage, you'll see a link that says Dashboard. Um, you should, most presidents uh, and executive directors 
have a login for this. If you don't have a login and want a login to your dashboard, let us know. Uh, but oops, and then make sure. I'll check that. This is a sample um, account I set up for this tutorial. And so just to give you an idea, I think most of you have seen these already, but if you, if you need to get into your dashboard, I'm actually opened one for the Mona Plaza of Arts and Culture because it's a new community. We do not have any data there. But as you want to upload information, for example, your 990 file, you click on the Choose File, navigate to, navigate to where the file would be in, in your space, right? And so I'm going to look at... I have a sample right here of a Form 990. I click Open, and you will see it show up right here in the list. It has not uploaded yet until we uh, go through a, a second step. I'm going to upload one more file, uh, a board roster. So here's the board roster. Upload that one. It shows up as ready to upload, but not in the list yet. As I scroll down, I'll hit the Update Local button and your files will show up in the space. You'll see over in the lower left, it says uploading the files. It gives you a progress report. And when it's completed, it goes back to the main screen, and then you'll see the actual files there. One thing I do want to say about the dashboard before I go back to the presentation is when you're uploading conflict of interest disclosure statements. The dashboard, you can only upload one file. And so if you upload a second file, it's going to replace the one that is already there. So if you have multiple files or, or, or documents, say for your work plan, your budget, or your conflict of interest statements, then you want to put them into one file and then upload them all at once. Um, I'll jump back into the presentation and, and, uh, and move forward from there. So the that one thing I want to say is the dashboard does not alert us to yet uh, that you have logged in and uploaded files. We can log in and see when the last time was that you logged in. So if you're updating files, please send Amy or, or Amy Barnhart or myself a, a quick note and just let us know these are the sections I've updated so we can go in and log in and mark them off as completed. A um, couple of pieces about your work plan. The work plan is a critically important piece to your work and, and our work with you. And so we, need, we do need to have those work plans in place as part of your certification process. We look to see if your work plan is, is, is it community driven, collaborative, is there some process around how you determine your four points project, right? Is there some basis for what your projects are that are rooted in your master plan, your cultural plan, or some transformation vision? Does it show your incremental projects and activities? Your work plan should not be just a compliance document. And, and, and we, we've seen that, I think, uh, in, on a couple of occasions where the work plan was just created for, uh, for the site visit. It's never revisited again. And so you want to spend some time with your work plan and use that to guide your work through the year. Uh, we do like your work plan to, to identify what resources you're allocating to your project, money and, and people. Uh, we do want to see who's responsible for the project and the timelines for getting them done, right? If you have bigger projects in your work plan, you should create a project implementation plan, which is a further um, planning document, one pager, that really says for this specific project, let's just say the uh, Balloon Fiesta fundraiser, you have a full step-by-step -step overview of what that's done. Right? The work plan should be adopted by your board and should be adopted by your board before the site visit. But I'll talk about uh, what your options are here shortly if it's not adopted by that time. So let's talk about the site visit itself. Um, who should be involved where? So first of all, uh, for this year, the site visit, we do want to meet with the Main Street Executive Director only uh, ahead of time, and that's usually about an hour long session. We will move over to meet with your local government partners and any other key government partners that we should be meeting with. So if the MOU is with the city, it should be the mayor, city council, city managers. If you're working with the county, you can invite them in as well. So this is about an hour-long session, and this is only uh, this is only 
the Main Street Assessment Team and your local government partner. We will move to an hour and a half session with the Board of Directors only. Uh, we are asking that 80% of your board uh, be at this session and we are trying to schedule the sessions for the evenings this year to make it more accommodating for you as well. Right? So we do want to meet with the board. And then this year we're going we're gonna, to uh, finish up with a short working session, hour and a half or so, with your staff, your board, and, and so your executive director can be invited back in. And any key volunteers that are helping you with your projects, they might not be board members, right? So you can ask them back in, and I'll talk a little bit about the working session here shortly. If you are an arts and cultural district community, then we will meet with your ACD team, coordinating council, and that usually will be the first meeting of the day before we meet with the Main Street Executive Director. The working sessions, I think everybody has seen these slides uh, already. The working sessions, um, uh, this was part of our last webinar and our discussions in Artesia, really going to focus on how do we help identify and prepare for next year your current projects and how do they fit specific economic development strategies. Uh, Rich and Rich Williams, Daniel Gutierrez, Amy Barnhart and I are make up the assessment team. There will be two of us on site and really facilitate a conversation between your board and your partners about how do your existing projects support specific economic development strategies. Don't feel like you have to have them all done uh, by this site visit because that's part of the working session is to open a discussion about that, right? So how the projects actually get to the outcomes in individual strategies. And again, this is a slide from our previous presentation as well. A um, couple of things about the, the board essentials that, that are important. First of all, there is a, a, an expectation that your board not only participates in a site visit, but is really participating in, in the, the work of the organization year-round. Right? So there's, we do want to see at least 80% of you on the board at the site visit, uh, and we, it's, it is important for your board members to be involved year-round. Right? We do want strong communication from all your board members. We understand that there are some individuals that are less comfortable in speaking uh, about spe specific pieces, but we do explore where everybody is on that piece. The board members should know and, and act on the responsibilities, should know their roles and their responsibilities, and also really understand the work of the organization, right? So uh, I think uh, we do spend some time working with the boards and exploring those topics during the site visit. A couple of things as we get to the end of the, the end of the presentation, I just want to cover some of the things that we we learned from the last couple of years of the performance review. I'll start out with the 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 benefits of waiting for uh, on the preparation piece, and there are exactly no benefits to that, right? So you don't want this your preparation for the site visit to be a last minute piece. Uh, apologies to those early in, in, in the, uh, the, the discussion process who really have a, um, uh, a shorter time span. But uh, if you're, we discussed this last year, if your site visits are September, October, you can expect those to be a recurring time frame as well, right? Um, remember, we are not trying to make, force anybody into uh, being assimilated into our way of doing things. But and and I think often uh, the the request for the compliance documents is 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 looking at that. And so please please just keep in mind that compliance information is an important part of your participation in the program. We do expect people to show up. It it really uh, it really helps when we have all your board members there, uh, but at least eighty percent of them, right? We I, we do suggest that you that you play your your discussion really on on a solid and open communication basis, right? If there is a if there is a um, promotions event, for example, in your downtown district, and you really didn't have anything to do with it, it's okay to share that, but you also don't want to take credit for this is what we did as well, right? So um, there are no real points off or what you're not doing, we're really trying to get to the place for where, where you could should be next, right? 
Your local government is a key partner. They should not just be your funder. And so we're going we're gonna to want to know how are they involved in your planning process? How are they involved in the management of your capital outlay projects, right? Um, and who are your other partners, right? It, no need to bring a list of partners into the room if they're not really working uh, well with you, right? They don't feel like you need to serve up partners for our benefit if they're really not helping you. And, and so uh, we should talk about, the discussion should focus more on what partners should you really be working with in space, right? Your work plans are important. Your budgets and your statistics are important. Please review those as a group before we show up on site. Remember that the work is focusing on economic development, and so a lot of our assessment is going to ask you questions about that. We do ask you to communicate freely. This should be an opportunity for you to give us feedback and for you to work through some problem solving with us as well, right? Um, it's important to remember when to be in the room and when not. And I think we had a little bit of miscommunications last year where we had either staff or board members join us in the uh, meetings with a local government partner, we do need to have that those separate sessions with them as well, right? We don't want you to be on the defensive, um, and so we just, and I know it's hard not to be sometimes, you want to show up well, you want to perform well, we want you to do well, right? But we also feel like this should be a working session about where you could or should be next if you're not there, right? Um, Making the grade minimum requirements, I think we've, we've, we've published several times what it takes by way of being state certified to uh, minimum hours for your staffer and minimum operating budgets. If you're not there, then, then don't feel like you need to hide it. Let's figure out how we need to move forward from there. Uh, on the last two, uh, I just want to say not all who wander are lost, right? And so this is your opportunity to tell us, hey, we're trying something different. And it may not fit at all, and this is your opportunity to really share with us. It doesn't necessarily fit your model, but it works for us. And, and honestly, we learn a lot from communities, and we think you are the ones doing the real innovation on the ground. So don't, be, uh, don't hesitate uh, to share that. In the final recommendations, if there are areas that, that, that you come by way of recommendations that you're not doing, don't think that we're asking you to entirely restructure your organization and your work, right? There are some things that have to be remediated, but uh, don't necessarily require a full restructuring of everything you're doing. So that's a conversation we should have as well. Uh, and then finally, uh, to close up the session, a couple of things about following up and the following through. First of all, the, we do recognize that the reports that were coming back to you were either late very late or or not delivered at all, right? And so we what we're doing is we're moving these sessions to the evening. Uh, the assessment team will come up with some very basic recommendations and deliver them to you via email or a memory stick the next day. So it's going to be a lot less um, of the introductory content on the front of those recommendations that really get to the meat. If there are areas of compliance that aren't met when we show up on site, say you don't have your 990, or you don't have your Attorney General's registration, there will be a 30-day grace period to get those uploaded. There will be special cases where you're waiting on information from an accountant or from an attorney that delays that process. You'll have an opportunity to share that information with Rich and extend that grace period if needed, right? You will know the moment you get the recommendations the next morning whether or not you have met the requirements for state certified and or any recommendations for you to get there quickly in the next 30 days, right? You will also know if the state is, is looking to reclassify you as a Main Street partner or affiliate if because your, your funding or your staffing process is not meeting the minimum requirements, right? The accreditation, the national accreditation piece may take a, li a little bit longer. We should have quite a bit of information for to really give you some feedback on your national accreditation piece. But the final justifications do not go to the National Main Street Center until early February, which means the final real designation on whether you're a nationally accredited program won't happen until then, right? If you have any concerns or feedback or responses or even a challenge 
to the recommendations that we have, those should be prepared in writing and sent directly to Rich Williams. And then uh, the team will come together and address your concerns and aspects. So I believe uh, that is all the content of the presentation. I did want to say if you have any further questions about the assessment process, please don't hesitate to contact Amy or I first. Uh, Amy, myself, Rich, and Daniel are all part of the assessment team, and we look forward to being in your community. And so uh, with that, I will open it up. Uh, I, before I turn it over to questions, I just want to check in with Anna and Daniel if there's anything you want to say, any announcements. Just a couple of small items. Thanks for participating in our webinar today. Um, upcoming webinars, uh, part two of the asset-based economic development. Uh, we had originally listed for September 7th as a tentative or 17th as a tentative time for that webinar. It has been rescheduled to September 24th, and that's also a noon to 12:45 session. And you will be getting emails um, and contact information from me about how to sign up. Uh, for the webinar. Thank you. Daniel? Um, I'd just like to say I want to thank Eduardo for putting this uh, this together because uh, I mean I think sometimes the assessment can be a scary period and it shouldn't be. I mean I really it's time for us to connect and and really get to meet uh, more community members, the board members, your community partners and and really you know understand how you guys are working together and and you know, for us, like Eduardo said, to learn from you and also just make recommendations on how to get you guys to the next step if that's the case. So uh, just really, you know, treat it more as a learning experience. Especially, I think that's why we wanted to implement the work plan. You know, we're, we're working with you to create a work plan on the spot, and uh, I think that can help you know flesh out some ideas that people may have. So hopefully, uh, this will be a better process going forward and uh, you know I look forward to seeing the people that uh, on the places I get to go for the uh, assessment so thanks for attending thanks and I'll just close with that one by saying I we we know this means a lot to you uh, and it means a lot to us as well and we do really want you to perform well and so whatever assistance we can we can give you to help you get there please don't hesitate to ask um, and with that I will just say if anybody would like to uh, um, ask a question verbally. There is a there is a raise your hand button in, function in the control panel. You can raise your hand. I'll unmute your audio and or you can submit your question in the question and answer box, and we'll look forward to those as well. So um, we don't have anybody. It does look like there might be a question. We don't have anybody raising their hand. And here. Mm -hmm. Oh, how can I get this all on paper, uh, Leroy? So you, we, the uh, we, the handout list actually shows in this control panel shows the documents where you can download the slides, and we will also create uh, the recording of this presentation into a YouTube file, and Anna will send you a link to where you can see that. So if you have board members, partners who really should hear this information before the site visit, they can actually log on and listen to the entire content of the presentation. They'll see the slides as well. Uh, but if you do have any additional questions, feel free to feel free to ask us. Any other questions? Is there a template of okay, let me see this. Uh, is there a template of critical information you provide for the annual summary? such as a template. We're preparing an annual report for our stakeholders, and I wonder if we can utilize this information and knock out two results in one effort. Um, I don't think, I believe we have any, I might have some annual report templates, but we do not have any set ones that, were, that are established for New Mexico Main Street. I'll be happy to, to look in the files and I'll work with Amy and try and get that put together for you. But I think it's a great idea uh, to not have to prepare a two-page summary and then another justification for your national accreditation and another for an annual report to really present to your, your government partners. So I'll be happy to, to start looking at and options for that one and share that information. All right. Um, 
Uh, we do have a question saying we checked our digital dashboard and it says we're not state or nationally accredited when we are. Uh, so the dashboards were actually um, uh, cleared out in advance of this coming uh, this coming site visit, right? So all those, if you are out of compliance, for example, we don't have the most current document for your Secretary of State registration, then we cleared out that element. Uh, the national accreditation ones are still valid, and so Amy and I will go back in and make sure those are still up to date as well. Uh, we do have a question that says, what is the Attorney General report? Um, every nonprofit by law in the state of New Mexico has to register with the Attorney General's office as a charitable organization. You can go to the Attorney General rep website and log in to the CORO's, it's C-O-R-O-S, and it really is an annual update of who your board members are, your fundraising activities. They do ask you to load your operating budgets. Uh, and your most recent 990. Every organization has to have that and be current, uh, nonprofit organization. So the only one that is exempt in New Mexico in Main Street right now is, is the Farmington Main Street program because they reside in the city government, right? Um, and so uh, if you need some help with the if you need some help with the uh, Attorney General registration, send us a private email and we'll be happy to help you walk through that process. I don't think we have any more, I don't think we, we have any more questions. Um, that was the last of our questions. So um, I just want to say thank you for joining us today. If you have any additional questions that come up or if you have questions that come up because a board member was actually watch the presentation after this on YouTube, please please don't hesitate to, to uh, send us an email, give us a call, and we'll be happy to try and answer your questions. I want to say thank you for joining us today, and we look forward to seeing you, and uh, uh, have a great holiday weekend. Thank you for joining us on, on Labor Day weekend. Good day.